Hi everybody, so sorry we're late and sorry for the technical difficulties, but we're here, we're in our kitchen. Timmy's making his famous guacatchouli, which he doesn't say is famous, but it's pretty famous. And I'm answering all your questions from Instagram. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have corrected everything on my Instagram, so hopefully some of you guys will pop up pretty soon. Anyways, we're making guacamole. Timmy just picked this fresh lemon from our lemon tree outside, which I feel very grateful to have. Hi, welcome to Timmy's Kitchen. Have you guys ever seen avocado like tilt it down? Get a shot of avocado. Wow. Whoa. Perfectly. So you've missed right. um, all the instruction on how to cut and extract the pit from the avocado. Um, now we're going to mush it up and we're gonna put some lemon in it. Not Sometimes I do this. You guys ever seen this move? Mm. You know what that does? That gets, ooh, three people. Okay, we got some people here. That gets the juices coming out. There's already juices coming out of the skin. Well, I can smell it. It smells so good. We should make like a lemon olive oil cake with those. Whitney's been drinking. Oh, I haven't, <laughs> but I wish I did. If I didn't get such bad headaches, I would actually do it. Look at all my flyaways today. Wow. Okay. I am going to start answering your questions as you guys are filtering in. You guys asked me a bunch of good questions. We will also be making the guacamole, just avocado and lemon so far. Um, First question. Tim's got a new hairdo. Oh, my mom's. That was for my mom. <laughs> A new just, hairdo? No, it's just up. Oh. What do you guys think of my hair? Does it look like Kramer's hair? Now it smells like lemon. Yeah, I just put a little lemon in it. You're, if you go out into the sun, you're going to get blonde streaks. You guys, my preferred method for mushing up the guacamole is to use a fork. All right, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up these questions, okay? Babe, if they're too personal, you just pretend like they didn't. Okay, I will. First question from Allison McCorcoran. <laughs> on a date, do you guys sit on the same side of the table or opposite? <sighs> Good question. So we usually sit opposite. Um, I think if it's a booth situation, sometimes we are more inclined to sit on the same side of the table. Uh, well, we went on our Valentine's we Day date. Exactly. Well, we sat in like a round booth situation and we sat next to each other. I, Talk to me, Whit. I'm happy with either. I feel close to him no matter what. I think that sitting across from each other is a good scenario for conversation. Mm -hmm, we can mm -hmm. really look each other in the eye mm. and not be kind of profiling each other. Um, but I wouldn't say there's a right or a wrong answer to that question. Well, if, uh, um, what I like to do sometimes, sit across, and then when the dessert comes, slide around. A little, little romance. That's a good tip for, for the, all you boys out for there. The end of the night. So now that my guacamole is mushed, there's some pieces still, babe. I leave some purpose on purpose oh, for, for a later. That like chunky? No, for a later step that I'll, oh. I'll tell you about. I'm gonna get my onion. And I'm gonna show you how to chop an onion. <laughs> what do you what? think you are, Mario Batali? No, he's like a. Oh yeah, he did I know. Some bad stuff. Oops. Okay. So, next question. Laura Forcioni. Good. This is like the rhythm we're gonna do. Is newly engaged. What is our best marriage advice for her? Um. Fight fair. Fight. Um. Fair. I think arguing is inevitable. Um. You are two different people with two different outlooks. So don't be scared by it. But try to have like reasonable conversations without any tone and no name calling. I think that validating each other's feelings, even though one may not think that the feelings are valid, is important. Um, That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So normally we would use a red onion, but we have all these yellow onions, so we're gonna use a yellow onion. And this one's small, which is good because we don't want too much onion. First, I cut off this part. 
Shoop. Then I cut down the middle on that part. How many of y'all know how to cut an onion? How many of y'all, y'all, maybe like from Texas or something. Mm -hmm. Then I peel off the gross stuff, right? How do you know when to stop? I don't know. You just feel it. You out. just know. You just don't want those hard layers on because hard layers are chewy and disgusting. There's, there's like that one layer under a couple layers that's all film. I take that part off and then I stop. Then you cut it like this. I don't know what that would be called, bisecting it. Okay, but up. not all the way. Then you make a bunch of guys like that. Whitney, maybe you could hook up the camera work. Your other hand is blocking, blocking it. I'm nervous. Don't be nervous, but just pay more attention to that than What if Mario Batali is watching? Then you cut it like this, and you should be done. And I like it really little. Yeah, nobody wants large chunks no, of onion. Nobody wants a big onion chunk up in their face. Okay, Whitney, is that enough onion? Yes, I think that's more than enough. Okay, more than enough. So if you speak Whitney, it means don't take it all. Uh-huh. How's that? More? A little more, like that little guy. Like this little guy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next question from Lizzie Lupino. Was sleep training easy for you? Arg. Don't know if we're going to survive. Mm. Sleep training is a really, really difficult thing to do. Um, it's a difficult thing to feel comfortable starting. It's a difficult thing to do once you're in it. You just don't know when it's ever going to be over. But for us, we use the amazing Alana McGinn, who I told you guys about, and she's an expert. So because she really knew what she was talking about, we trusted her and did whatever she told us to do, even if it did mean like listening to Sunny cry a lot. She assured us that it was okay and that he was going to be okay. And that him learning to put himself to sleep on his own was like, that's what he needed to do in order to be a good sleeper moving forward. So we slept trained him at six months. Um, we did the cried out method. We didn't do the check-in method. We kind of just like wanted to rip off the band aid. the first night. I believe he probably cried for 15 to 20 minutes um, the second night, 10, the third night, five. And then by the fourth night, he was sleeping through the night. And really, besides like various time changes or travel, he's been a pretty good sleeper since then. Update. I think I need to add one more. One more avocado? Yeah. Is it ripe enough? Yeah, this, this one's, one's ripe. Good. Yeah. Should I t tell him my tricks? And but wait, 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 wait. Are you making this for tonight or for right now? For tonight. Or should I just not make it? I would, if I would, you know, what the you hard part, think? you guys, ooh, my eyes are burning. I always advise Timmy not to make guacamole too early because it browns really easily and nobody wants to eat brown guacamole. I think the fresher, the better, but I don't know if we're in too deep. We're definitely in deep. Unless I would just wait. I would make that and eat that now if that's what you're planning on eating for lunch. Not all of it. And then and then add in fresh later. We won't have enough. Enough oh, okay. what? Fine. I see what you're saying. Sorry. Just guacamole, man. It can either make your day or, or ruin your day. All right. I'm going to go on to the next question. Mm-hmm. Um... What is Sunny's current nap schedule? Is he on one nap? If so, how did you transition? Um, Sunny's nap schedule is yes, one nap. You look confused. You're not sure what to do right now. Is the guacamole portion of the live video over? No, are you done with it? You probably needed salt and pepper. No, and I have so much pepper. more to do. Should I oh, finish? Yeah, I would make that batch and but then save this. Save a little bit of everything to add to make it fresher later. Okay. Okay. So he um he transitioned to one nap when he was a year and a half. And what we did was we just gradually started keeping him up longer. So usually he would start taking a first nap at like nine or 10, and then he'd have a second nap at two. And what we did was we just started keeping him up. Like one day we keep him up to 11 and then the next day, 1130 and then the next day 12. And then we just slowly transitioned him. So he felt comfortable being awake longer 
And then we got him to a point where he was up until 1 p.m. And now he sleeps from about 1 till 3.34 ish almost every day, which is an amazing big chunk of time in the middle of the day to actually be productive. And make guacamole. And I'm going to put in. Oh, Timmy, we're on your on your profile. Damn it! Turn it off. <laughs> this happened before. Someone said you're on Tim's again. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> Bye, Guacacholi people. We'll be back on Whitney's thing. Son of a god, how do I even end it? Whitney, well, you can't leave. End stream. End stream. <laughs> and <laughs>